What is up everybody? Welcome back. Okay, so we've spent like five videos prepping for this, but we're finally gonna start shifting some curves. Make sure to smash that like button while the music plays. So yeah, we're gonna shift the AD and SRS curves in this video. And since we're only concerned with the short run in this lesson, I'm gonna go ahead and make the executive decision to leave the LRAS curve out of this one. I think it would just be distracting. But promise me that you'll keep in mind that when you draw this model, you're pretty much always gonna have to draw the LRAS curve as well. Okay, so here we are starting at a point of short run equilibrium. We'll label our initial price level P1 and our initial level of output Y1. Let's start with a positive demand shock, which is the AD curve shifting to the right. This is caused by an increase in aggregate spending in the economy, be it an increase in consumption, investment, government spending, or net exports. The important thing to notice is what happens to the price level and output as a result of the shift, the AD curve shifting to the right. In this case, the positive demand shock causes both P and Y to increase. And this is gonna matter a lot in unit four because what happens to P and Y will tell us what to do on a model that we'll be doing then called the money market model. Now, don't worry about that just yet. I just want you to know that it's really important that you take notice of how these shocks affect P and Y. Okay, so if we stay here for a minute, there's a little bit more information that we can gather from the AD curve shifting to the right. Since output has increased, that means that unemployment has fallen since more workers are needed to produce the increased output. But what I wanna focus on is what happens to wages. Some of this is a review from previous videos, but I think this is the right time to make sure we're all good on this topic. There are two types of wages, real and nominal. A nominal wage is the dollar amount of the wage a person gets paid, while real wages control for inflation and show us the actual purchasing power of the wage. We learned in 3.3 that nominal wages are sticky in the short run. So when the economy experiences this positive demand shock, nothing happens to nominal wages in the short run. However, the same isn't true for real wages. Let's do just a little bit of math to see why that is. Real wage equals nominal wage divided by price level times 100. Suppose that initially the nominal wage is $12 and the price level is 100. $12 divided by 100 times 100 equals $12. But then after the shift, notice that the price level has increased to 120. The nominal wage hasn't changed because of sticky wages. But let's calculate the real wage again. $12 divided by 120 times 100 equals $10. So even though the nominal wage didn't change, the real wage decreased because of the increase in the price level. So in the short run, unemployment falls, nominal wages remain fixed, but real wages fall as consumers feel the pressure of a rising price level. So more people have jobs and that's good, but the purchasing power of workers has fallen and that's not so good. This is the kind of thing that those of you who want an A in your class and a five on the AP exam want to make sure you know so you can answer those types of next level questions. A negative demand shock shifts the AD curve left, leading to a lower price level and lower level of output. This is caused by a decrease in C, I, G, or XN, and because of the decrease in output, unemployment rises. Nominal wages are unchanged in the short run and real wages rise, this time because the same nominal wage is being divided by a lower price level. So we're in a weird spot here where fewer people have jobs, but those who still have jobs have more purchasing power. A positive supply shock shifts the SRAS curve to the right and results in a lower price level and an increase in aggregate output. Notice that unlike AD shifts, which move P and Y in the same direction, SRAS shifts push price and output in opposite directions. Positive supply shocks can be caused by a decrease in nominal wages, people expecting lower inflation, a decrease in resource prices, a reduction in business taxes, or an increase in subsidies to businesses, or an increase in productivity and technology. A negative supply shock shifts the SRAS curve to the left and results in a higher price level and a decrease in aggregate output. The worst of all worlds. Less stuff is being produced and what is being produced costs more. This situation is known as stagflation, which refers to a situation in which both unemployment and inflation are high. Not good. If you don't believe me, just ask Jimmy Carter about the oil crisis of 1979. So those are our four possible shifts. 
So the last thing to point out is that there are two different ways we can see inflation on this model. The first is caused by a positive demand shock, where the AD curve shifts to the right, and this is known as demand pull inflation, meaning that the cause of the inflation is the increased demand in spending by households, businesses, and governments. The other way we get inflation is from a negative supply shock, when the SRAS curve shifts left, and this is known as cost push inflation. But in Unit 4, we'll get into the real causes of inflation, so remember these terms, but there's more coming still. That's it for this one. I hope to see you in the next video when we finally address how the economy adjusts from the short run to the long run. I know you've been waiting for it. So until next time, this has been a La Money production. Thanks again for watching this video. Make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, ring the bell for notifications, and make sure to check out the description for links to the answers to these practice questions, as well as other great resources I've made for you. And I will see you in the next video.